The Untold Truth of Steven Siegel. Celebrated for his martial arts expertise, Steven Siegel has captivated the attention of global movie audiences for many years. His 1992 role in Under Siege, an action film that earned a staggering $150 million worldwide, stands as a testament to his cinematic success. However, Seagull's journey in the world of film, with its highs and lows, represents just one facet of his remarkably unusual life story. Beyond the intricacies of his enduring movie career, Seagal's life has been marked by a series of controversies that involve notable figures such as Sean Connery and even Vladimir Putin himself. He has found himself entangled in events involving organized crime and encounters with the FBI. Today, we will reveal some lesser-known facts of Steven Seagal's professional journey and personal life. He proves to be quite challenging as a collaborator. Steven Siegel is a martial artist, actor, and film producer, known for his action-packed roles in Hollywood. While his career boasts a series of successful action films, Seagal has also gained a reputation as a difficult co-worker due to various incidents throughout his career. One of the notable incidents occurred during the filming of Executive Decision, Seagull, known for his martial arts skills, allegedly lost his temper and physically confronted his co-star, John Leguizamo, shoving him against a wall. This incident shed light on Seagull's confrontational nature on set. Seagull's difficulties extended to his hosting gig on Saturday Night Live in 1991. During his time on the show, he was reportedly highly critical of the cast and writing staff, Tim Meadows, a longtime SNL cast member, commented that Seagull seemed unaware that berating the team midweek could not result in effective comedy sketches by Saturday. David Spade, who spent six years on the show, described Seagull as the worst host he had encountered, partly attributing this to Seagull's peculiar taste in comedy. Julia Sweeney revealed that Seagull proposed a controversial sketch in which he would play a therapist pursuing a romantic encounter with a rape survivor. The idea was deemed inappropriate, and as a result, Seagull was banned from ever hosting SNL again. Another intriguing incident took place during the filming of The Glimmer Man. Seagull was cast as the protagonist, tasked with defeating a serial killer played by Stephen Tobolowsky. However, Seagull, who had built his career on being an action hero, suddenly decided that it was bad for his karma to continue killing people on screen. Thinking quickly, Tobolowski proposed a unique solution, suggesting that Seagal's character would be releasing the villain's soul, allowing him to reincarnate as a more peaceful being. Seagal agreed to this twist, and the scene was filmed as planned. However, Seagal later ad-libbed a line stating, Thank God I didn't kill that guy. This ad-lib forced Tobolowski to record additional lines to create the illusion that his character had survived, reminiscent of a classic horror movie monster. Interestingly, these added lines did not make it into the final cut of the film, leaving a somewhat perplexing scene for viewers. Debate surrounding the concept of reincarnation. While he is renowned for his contributions to the entertainment industry, his journey into Buddhism and claims of being a tulku, a reincarnated Buddhist master, have brought both attention and skepticism from the religious community. In 1997, Penor Rinpoche, the supreme head of the Nyingma school of Tibetan Buddhism, made a surprising announcement that Stephen Seagal was a tulku. A tulku is believed to be a reincarnated Buddhist master who has taken on the responsibility of aiding all beings in attaining enlightenment. According to Rinpoche's revelation, Seagal had a significant past life as Turton Chungdrag Dori in the 17th century. Chungdrag Dori was a renowned translator who played a pivotal role in establishing a monastery and discovering several powerful relics. This spiritual history led to Seagal being declared a lama, a highly venerated teacher in Tibetan Buddhism, a status just below that of the Dalai Lama himself. During his inauguration as a lama, Seagal pledged his commitment to alleviating suffering across the globe and subsequently began giving seminars on compassion at New Age retreat centers.
His newfound role as a spiritual teacher seemed to align with his public persona as a martial artist and actor. However, Seagal's claim to spiritual status has faced considerable skepticism, primarily due to allegations of sexual harassment against him. Some have questioned whether someone facing such accusations could genuinely possess the moral character expected of a tulku. Even fellow celebrity Buddhist Richard Gere expressed doubt, stating, If someone's a tulku, that's great, but no one knows if Seagal's claim is true. Further fueling skepticism is the allegation that Seagal had made substantial financial contributions to Rinpoche's school before being declared a tulku. This has led some to speculate that these donations may have played a role in his convenient recognition as a reincarnated master. This skepticism is noteworthy because, traditionally, reincarnated teachers, or tulkus, are typically identified and recognized as children rather than adults. His unusual connection with the UFC. In February 2011, the MMA world was abuzz with anticipation as middleweight champion Anderson Silva faced off against Vidor Belfort, with Silva widely regarded as the greatest mixed martial artist of his time. In a remarkable moment during round one of the fight, Silva executed a front kick to Belfort's face, knocking him out in dramatic fashion. This kick became one of the most iconic moments in UFC history. Shortly after this fight, Steven Seagal stepped into the spotlight and claimed full credit for teaching Silva that very kick, going as far as asserting that he had invented it. Seagal's claims drew skepticism from many, but it was worth noting that he had escorted Silva to the ring on that memorable night. Seagal's penchant for taking credit didn't stop there. When Lyoto Machida executed a Karate Kid-style crane kick to knock out the legendary Randy Couture in a subsequent UFC event, Seagal once again made headlines by asserting that he had taught Machida the kick. He even brought this claim to the comedy stage on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Initially, Anderson Silva seemed to play along with Seagal's claims, perhaps in a lighthearted manner. He commented that Seagal was a good person, but clarified that he had been practicing that particular kick before ever meeting the actor. Silva's statement essentially debunked Seagal's claims, suggesting that the martial arts legend was exaggerating his influence on MMA techniques. Other athletes, however, were less diplomatic in their responses to Seagal's self-proclaimed martial arts expertise. When Siegel attempted to offer advice to light heavyweight champion John Jones backstage at UFC 135, Jones reportedly turned him away. Former UFC champion Ronda Rousse bluntly stated that she believed she could beat the crap out of Seagal. In a bizarre turn of events, Seagal even challenged two-time ex-champion Randy Couture to a fight. Couture's response was both humorous and dismissive, suggesting that Seagal wanted the fight to take place in a private, remote location where nobody could see it happen. The confrontation between Steven Seagal and the iconic James Bond. Beyond his on-screen performances, Seagal has played a role in the choreography of many of his films, although one notable instance outside his filmography was his involvement in the James Bond film Never Say Never Again in the early 1980s. In Never Say Never Again, Seagal took on the task of teaching martial arts to the legendary actor Sean Connery, who was reprising his role as James Bond. Connery was already well-versed in karate, having been awarded an honorary third-degree black belt while preparing for his role in the 1967 Bond film You Only Live Twice. However, for his seventh outing as Bond, Connery needed to add Aikido to his skill set and Seagal was the man tasked with instructing him. Initially, Connery's lessons with Seagal seemed to be progressing smoothly. However, Connery later recounted that he had become somewhat overconfident, thinking he had a grasp of the techniques being taught. In an unfortunate turn of events, an irritated Seagal allegedly grabbed Connery's arm during a training session and unintentionally broke the actor's wrist. Remarkably, Connery soldiered on with his training, not realizing that his wrist had been fractured until the late 1990s. This incident highlighted Seagal's rigorous approach to martial arts instruction. Interestingly, Seagal also demonstrated his resilience and dedication to his craft. During the production of his breakout film, 
above the law. Actor Henry Silva accidentally broke a seagull's nose with a particularly forceful punch during a fight scene. Determined to continue with the shoot, Seagal spent the night acing his battered face to ensure he could resume filming the next day. This episode showcased Seagal's commitment to his work and his willingness to endure discomfort in the pursuit of his art. The clash involving Steven Seagal and the group known as the Dirty Dozen. Steven Seagal rose to fame as one of Hollywood's biggest martial arts stars during his heyday. However, despite his martial arts prowess and impressive achievements, his abilities in real-life combat have been a subject of debate and skepticism. Siegel is known for being a seventh Dan black belt in Aikido, a Japanese martial art that emphasizes joint locks and the redirection of an opponent's momentum. His martial arts journey included a significant milestone when he became the first American to teach Aikido in Japan, a remarkable accomplishment in itself. However, the effectiveness of Aikido in practical self-defense situations has been questioned by many martial arts experts. Fight analyst Jack Slack noted that Aikido techniques are most effective when an opponent is charging straight at the practitioner, a scenario that experienced fighters tend to avoid. UFC commentator Joe Rogan also expressed doubts, asserting that Aikido would never work against a trained fighter. Despite these criticisms, Seagal had a reputation for boasting about his combat abilities. He often claimed that he could defeat anyone, anywhere, at any time. These bold assertions were not limited to his own skills. Seagal made controversial comments about legendary martial artists such as Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, as well as full-contact karate. One individual who took issue with Seagal's attitude was Bob Wall, an actor and high-ranking black belt with extensive tournament experience. Wall had personal connections with Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee and was not pleased with Siegel's behavior and comments. Determined to teach Siegel a lesson, Wall assembled a group known as the Dirty Dozen. This group included kickboxing and karate champions like Benny Urquidez, Bill Wallace, and Howard Jackson. The motivations of the members varied, with some seeking to expose Seagull as a fraud, while others were upset over allegations that Seagull had injured stuntmen. The Dirty Dozen aimed to get Seagull's attention, making appearances in magazines like Preview and Black Belt. However, despite their efforts to provoke a confrontation, there was never a showdown between Seagull and the group. When Seagull finally encountered Bob Wall, he reportedly offered an apology for his controversial statements and actions. When Steven Siegel experienced being put in a chokehold, Steven Siegel's colorful journey through the martial arts world includes an intriguing encounter with judo Jean LaBelle, a martial arts pioneer with a diverse background in combat sports and film. This episode sheds light on Siegel's real-life fighting skills and the controversial outcome of his challenge against LaBelle. Jean LaBelle, a martial artist with a vast repertoire of fighting styles, had a particular affinity for grappling, excelling in judo and jiu-jitsu. His expertise extended beyond his own accomplishments, as he had taught grappling techniques to legendary martial artist Bruce Lee and mentored UFC megastar Ronda Rousey. In fact, LaBelle even participated in the first televised MMA fight in American history in 1963, utilizing his ground game against a boxer named Milo Savage. LaBelle also ventured into the entertainment industry, working as an actor and stuntman, with credits in over 1,000 films and TV shows. During the production of the action movie Out for Justice, which starred Seagal, LaBelle served as the fight choreographer adding his extensive martial arts knowledge to the film's fight sequences. The confrontation between Seagal and LaBelle reportedly occurred when Seagal claimed that no one could choke him out due to a supposed secret technique that rendered him invulnerable to such moves. Jean LaBelle, never one to back down from a challenge, accepted the offer to test Seagal's claim. The two engaged in a physical altercation, and within seconds, LaBelle had Seagull in a rear naked chokehold. Seagull, facing the prospect of unconsciousness, 
allegedly resorted to a desperate move, an unconventional strike to LaBelle's genitals. Despite this low blow, LaBelle maintained his hold, and Seagull eventually lost consciousness. Adding a bizarre twist to the encounter, it was reported that Seagull may have had a substantial meal before the match, leading to an unsavory outcome as the unconscious actor allegedly soiled himself. While Steven Seagull has denied the occurrence of this fight, Jean LaBelle, often referred to as the godfather of grappling, has been steadfast in his account of the event. This incident has remained a source of fascination and debate within the martial arts and entertainment communities, further complicating the narrative of Seagull's real-life fighting abilities. The confrontation between Steven Seagull and organized crime. Steven Seagull, renowned for his on-screen battles against various cinematic villains, found himself facing a real-life confrontation with organized crime in the form of the Gambino crime family during the 1990s and early 2000s. This episode added a darker dimension to Seagull's biography, as he became entangled in a complex web of criminal intrigue. In the 1990s, Seagull collaborated with producer Julius R. Nasso, resulting in a string of successful films. However, their professional relationship turned sour in the year 2000. The situation took a sinister turn when the Gambino crime family became involved in their dispute. One fateful day, Seagull was escorted to a Brooklyn restaurant, where he encountered Anthony Sonny Sicconi, an alleged captain within the Gambino crime family. Sicona, as Sia Gal recounted, issued a directive for the actor to resume working with Nasso. To enforce this demand, Sicone insisted that Seagal pay $150,000 for each film he produced, effectively extorting the martial artist. In a state of fear and intimidation, Seagal complied and handed over a substantial sum of $700,000 to the gangsters. The gravity of the situation was palpable as Seagal reportedly left the meeting with a chilling warning that had he said the wrong thing, he might have met a grim fate at the hands of the criminals. The scandal came to light in 2003 when the U.S. government indicted alleged crime boss Peter Gotti and 16 others on various charges. Seagal's testimony served as a crucial component of the prosecution's case, corroborated by recorded conversations involving figures like Sicone and Nasso discussing their intimidation tactics against the movie star. These recordings even captured moments where they chuckled about the fear they had instilled in Seagal. Nasso defended his actions by asserting that Seagull had backed out of multiple movie deals, leaving him owed a substantial sum of $500,000. However, Nasso was ultimately sentenced to one year in federal prison for his involvement in the criminal activities associated with the case. Following his release from prison, Nasso pursued a legal course of action against Seagull, seeking a staggering $60 million in damages. However, the two parties eventually reached a settlement agreement for an undisclosed sum of money. The conflict involving Steven Siegel and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. Siegel's career had seen better days, with his earlier films enjoying considerable box office success, even if they weren't always critical darlings. However, as time went on, his films started bypassing traditional theaters and going straight to video on demand. Vodi, marking a shift in his career trajectory. The turning point came in 2002, when Los Angeles Times reporter Anita Bush began investigating Seagull in connection with producer Julius Nasso. In the course of her investigation, Bush discovered a disturbing and intimidating message left on her car one morning. A dead fish, a rose, and a sign that read, Stop, accompanied by a brand new bullet hole. Fearing for her safety, Bush promptly alerted the FBI, prompting the federal agency to launch an inquiry into Siegel's involvement. Initially, the FBI explored the possibility that Siegel had hired a private investigator named Anthony Pelicano to intimidate Bush as part of his efforts to stifle her investigation. Additionally, there were suspicions that Siegel had engaged someone to intimidate Vanity Fair writer Ned Zeman with a firearm. However, as the FBI delved deeper into the matter, 
they eventually concluded that there was insufficient evidence to implicate Seagal directly in these incidents. Instead, their focus shifted to Pelicano, who was known for his illegal surveillance of celebrities. While the FBI did not press charges against Seagal, they did not formally exonerate him either. Seagal, nonetheless, believes that the notoriety stemming from the Pelicano case significantly harmed his career in Hollywood. According to a Hollywood publicist, Seagal was never on the same level as A-list actors like Harrison Ford, but these accusations and controversies expedited his career decline. In light of the perceived damage to his career, Siegel has expressed a desire for an apology from the FBI, asserting that the allegations and investigations played a substantial role in his decline in the entertainment industry. Seagal's extremely daring operation. Seagal's passion for blues music and ornate saddles is well documented, but his interest in law enforcement took a unique turn. For approximately 20 years, Seagal served as a police officer in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. This involvement in law enforcement was not merely symbolic. He actively participated in police work during this time. In 2009, Siegel took his commitment to law enforcement to a whole new level by starring in a reality television show titled Steven Siegel Lawman. The show provided viewers with a glimpse into Siegel's life as a police officer. As part of the program, Seagal and his team tackled various law enforcement challenges and showcased his dedication to the profession. In the third season of the reality series, Seagal made a significant move by relocating to Arizona and partnering with the controversial Sheriff Joe Arpaio of Maricopa County. Arpaio, known for his media-savvy approach and unorthodox methods, welcomed Seagal, turning their collaboration into a captivating spectacle. One particularly infamous incident occurred in 2011 when Sheriff Arpaio orchestrated a raid against a local resident named Jesus Lovera, suspected of being involved in cockfighting. The operation involved a staggering display of force with up to 40 SWAT officers, a bomb squad, K-9 units, armored vehicles, and a remarkable sight, Seagull riding atop a tank. During the raid, parts of Lovera's property were damaged as Siegel's tank forcefully tore down the gates. Following Lavera's arrest, an unexpected challenge emerged. Lavera possessed over 100 roosters, leading law enforcement officials, including Seagull, to decide on the mass euthanization of the birds. To make matters worse, Lavera alleged that the police had also killed his 11-month-old puppy during the operation. In response to these allegations and the ensuing controversy, Lovera initiated a lawsuit against the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and sought an apology letter from Seagal. However, after pleading guilty to charges related to cockfighting, the lawsuit was eventually dropped. Fortunately, for those who may have been curious about this bizarre incident, it never aired on television as part of the reality show. He shares a close relationship with Putin. Steven Siegel's unique and controversial relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin has added a distinctive dimension to his biography. While many in the world view Putin as a polarizing figure, Siegel has expressed deep admiration and support for the Russian leader, making their friendship a topic of intrigue. Siegel's connection with Putin dates back to 2003, when the actor was in Moscow for the Moscow Film Festival. Their initial meeting blossomed into a friendship partly fueled by their shared passion for martial arts. Putin, an eighth-degree black belt in judo, and Seagal found common ground in their martial arts interests. It's worth noting that Putin's martial arts rank and achievements have raised questions about their legitimacy, given his background as an ex-KGB agent with significant influence. As their friendship grew, Putin and Seagal engaged in a variety of activities together. They dined together, visited martial arts dojos, and even collaborated on promoting old Soviet exercise programs. Their shared interests extended beyond martial arts, as they visited the Russian judo team while the athletes were preparing for the 2012 Olympics. In 2015, Putin took an unconventional step by suggesting to then-President Barack Obama that Seagal be appointed an honorary consul of Russia. 
This appointment was proposed with the intention of having Seagal serve as a potential intermediary between the two countries. However, Obama swiftly vetoed the idea, preventing Seagal from taking on a diplomatic role. Despite this, Seagal has continued to maintain a strong connection with Russia. He frequently visits the country, participating in various activities that reflect his support for Russian culture and politics. These visits have included giving Aikido demonstrations to Russian audiences, touring the factory that produces Kalashnikov rifles, attending a parade commemorating the 70th anniversary of the Nazi surrender to the USSR, and even performing a concert for pro-Russian separatists in the Crimean Peninsula. He holds Russian citizenship and is prohibited from entering Ukraine. Steven Seagal's affinity for Russian President Vladimir Putin reached an extraordinary level in November 2016 when he officially obtained Russian citizenship and became a citizen of Russia. What made this move even more significant was that Putin himself signed Seagal's Russian passport, underscoring the actor's newfound connection to the country. Putin's rationale for granting Seagal Russian citizenship was stated as a hope that the action would contribute to the gradual normalization of relations between Russia and the United States. This move was seen as a diplomatic gesture, albeit an unconventional one, aimed at fostering a bridge between the two nations. However, Seagal's close association with Russia and his vocal support for Putin's policies did not go unnoticed particularly by countries with strained relations with Russia. In May 2017, Ukraine announced a five-year ban on Siegel's entry into the country. The Ukraine Security Service cited the ban as being based on Ukrainian national security concerns. It was widely believed that this ban was influenced by Seagal's admiration for Russia's assertive actions in the region, notably the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula, which Ukraine has been seeking to regain. While the ban specifically targeted Seagal's entry into Ukraine, there was no confirmation regarding whether his films were also banned within the country. Nevertheless, this development highlighted the impact of Seagal's political and diplomatic alignment with Russia on his international standing, showcasing how his actions transcended the realm of entertainment and had real-world consequences. He has a deep affection for animals, particularly those with a mystical aura. Despite his reputation for breaking bones on screen, Seagull is a committed vegetarian who champions animal rights through his advocacy. He prefers using his influence to encourage companies to change their practices, believing that it's more effective to shame them into making ethical choices. Seagull's empathy for animals goes beyond dietary choices. He has expressed a profound connection with all creatures, seeing himself reflected in the diversity of life. In his own words, When I walk into a room, some people see a dog, some people see a cow. I am all of what they see. It is their perception. One notable instance of Seagal's animal advocacy occurred in 1999 when he played a crucial role in pressuring South Africa to halt the export of baby elephants to Japan. His efforts in this regard earned him a PETA Humanitarian Award, recognizing his contribution to protecting these animals. Four years later, Siegel extended his advocacy to Thailand, where he wrote to the government to address concerns about the treatment of baby elephants. He claimed to have single-handedly influenced positive changes in Thailand's treatment of these animals. Seagal's advocacy also extended to India, where he sought to raise awareness about the treatment of cows, animals that hold cultural and religious significance in the country. Among the many animals that have crossed paths with Seagal, there's one particularly unique story. During an interview with PETA, Seagal recounted an extraordinary experience from his early days in Japan when he was learning Aikido. He claimed that a white dog initially greeted him and, after a few days, began barking at him telepathically. This unusual behavior served as a warning to Seagull that his dojo was on fire, a situation that turned out to be true. Seagull managed to extinguish the fire and the white dog vanished, never to be seen or heard again. Despite the fantastical nature of this magical ESP dog story, Peter recognized Seagull's commitment to animal welfare by awarding him an honor, 
for his contributions to the cause. What do you think about these little-known facts about Steven Siegel? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.